Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, now we can start. So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Before we start the program, I as just I just shared the I just uh, introduce uh, Dr. P. Nandogopal. Dr. P. Nandogopal uh, has a proven track record of nurturing ventures from startup to leadership stage. He so far founded three life insurance companies in India and his latest venture insurance inbox is a state of the art digital health insurance tech ventures designed to meet the needs of customers across cities, towns and villages in India. Dr. Nandagopal is passionate about bringing a disruptive change in the insurance landscape to significantly improve the customer value proposition. Work done before, founded three life business companies, Villa Sun Life, Reliance Life, and uh, India First Life. Worked as a CEO for nine years prior to found insurance inbox. Achieved record setting growth in the companies he has led. Created enterprise value of, of over three billion. Won over 30 awards at national and international forums. Introduced bank insurance 2001, online insurance platform 2003, automated point of sales system 2010 for the first time in India. Industry leadership worked as the chairperson of Insurance Council Life and General of Industry Today Association 2009 to 2014. Author of the Life Insurance Vision Plan 2011 to 2021. Regularity experience nominated as the chairperson of Committee on Electronic Insurance Accounts of IRDI, the insurance regulator, development digital insurance de depository process. Uh, educational research, masters in business administration, finance and marketing majors, fellowship in insurance and fellowship in corporate law. PhD in insurance distribution economics. So far, uh, thank you so much, Seth. Please start this session for, for all of Indians. Please start. Thank you, Rotunda. Uh, it's my pleasure. Uh, I really. Uh, can we request everybody to mute? Please mute everybody and uh, thank you, Dothanda. I think it's my pleasure to really address your colleagues in the financial services and the IFA industry. I think you have got an excellent, uh, you know, membership uh, members throughout the country, and this is perhaps the most appropriate time to talk about health and how do we actually make sure that while we save health, we also share wealth and enjoy the fruits of both health and wealth. The world perhaps is completely besieged with the problem of the coronavirus and everybody in the world is now talking about health. And at the same time, of course, I mean, because the health has become such a big problem, we are now facing a serious erosion of personal wealth and business wealth also. So this actually brings to the topic that, you know, both health and wealth are very much interlinked. And if you really do not take care of even one, uh, one aspect, then the other thing is going to be impacted as well. And this is going to be uh, a somewhat I mean, uh, longer presentation for about an hour. And in case, suppose you want to ask any questions, please unmute your, yourself and then ask the question. Uh, okay. This section has got, this presentation has got six sections. I would like to talk first about the financial world because all of you are really familiar with, you know, how to manage wealth, what kind of financial plan you have to do for your customers. At the same time, you know, while you're doing that, what is the purpose of that particular wealth if you really do not enjoy that and if you do not have sufficient, you know, actually uh, physical health, uh, social health, uh, mental health, and then leading to the happiness. So these are the various sections I just like to talk about it. Financial wealth is a starting thing and then taking it forward to the physical health, 
social one, mental health, happiness, and how all of those things will lead to a good life is the kind of discussion flow I would like to follow. In this discussion flow, let's talk about the financial wealth, which of course is a very simple thing for most of us because we've been dealing with this kind of a matter for quite some time and some of your customers are pretty familiar and maybe this is the first thing anybody will actually have it in their minds. How do I get more money? See here, let's for a moment pause and define what is financial wealth because the wealth as a concept has been defined in a different sense. Sometimes people talk about he's got a wealth of knowledge, he's got a wealth of information, he's got a wealth of values. So those are all very good wealth. But then the real wealth which we are talking about at this point of time is the financial wealth. How do we get the, define the financial wealth? Financial wealth is having more than what you actually need. It is the abundance of valuable assets. If suppose somebody can very clearly enjoy a full whole life in absolute comfort, not just for himself, but for your family and everything with, let us say, about 10 crore of rupees. But if you are aspiring to have about a billion dollars and two billion dollars, that is more than what you require. And that's an abundance, abundant wealth. And that kind of a wealth you alone in your lifetime will not be able to enjoy fully. And that's the reason why we need to really think of if you are really talking about wealth, wealth is not always for yourself. Wealth is also for others. You may have to pass on the wealth to your family or friends. You have to pass it on to the society. It's something that you always share. Wealth is not just, I mean, you can never say that this is the only element of, only this much of wealth only are required. Because everyone, the moment you have your first 1 million rupees, you will ask for the one crore and the moment you have one crore you will ask for, for let's say 10 crores and that's how the whole concept happens that's right today when you talk about Mukesh Shambani perhaps I mean he's the richest person in India and maybe one of the richest persons in the world and all the kind of wealth what he's got is not uh, is beyond much much beyond I mean what he can enjoy but when you compare with the health health is very personal Unlike wealth, which you accumulate for the sum total of yourself, your family, your friends, as well as sometimes for the society, but the health is very personal thing, which you alone can earn it and you alone have to protect it and you alone can enjoy it. And that's why there is a subtle difference between health and wealth. Wealth, there is no limit, but health, of course, it is very clearly finite. And as your age advances, health always deteriorates. So having understood that, I mean, the... Uh, uh, the concept of financial wealth, I mean, we should also think about the ethical issues of do we really require so much of money beyond what's required for the com comfortable living? This is something that, of course, when we are showing the picture of Mahatma Gandhi, I mean, we know that, I mean, Mahatma Gandhi lived a very, very simple life and perhaps, I mean, he had an excellent health until he was assassinated. But he lived a very, uh, very spartan life without much of the... Uh, wealth or anything like that. But at the same time, I mean, you cannot say that he did not have happiness or he did not have a good living. So the fact is that while we talk about wealth in a very materialist sense, there is something that taught beyond wealth, you have to start thinking about it. What is the really other factor that will drive your happiness? So that's what, where, I mean, we talk about the purpose of the wealth. When we talk about the purpose, the purpose obviously changes as your life advances from childhood to the adolescence to the adulthood to the old age. In the early years of your life, I mean, when we are talking about wealth, the whole purpose is to actually have maybe your motorbike, your car, or maybe your first home, a two-bedroom house in some good neighborhood. These are the very, very simple needs all of us have. And that's the time when we start working very hard and we actually say that in the, during the end days, I must have at least these important assets so my wealth actually starts accumulating I mean, as I'm working very hard and while I'm young and my health is also good, that's the time when the health curve and wealth curve both will be in an ascending path. And as the family, as, as a person gets married and then he will have I mean, more kind of uh, you know, uh, dependence on him, a time will come where maybe there is a time where things will plateau and it not be beyond that particular point. I mean, his wealth is not really growing. At the most, I mean, he need to only make sure that it is protected because if you don't really protect your wealth, 
sometimes when it is cut and suddenly start uh, deteriorating, that's the time when you think that, you know, okay, fine, whatever I have, it is fine, but let me start enjoying. That's the time maybe you'll retire at the age of 60, 65. Some people retire even much earlier, 55 and all that. And that's the time when you actually start enjoying the fruits of the wealth. Until then, you keep adding to that. So the purpose is, one is that, you know, you accumulate to save as well as to redeem the benefits of the wealth at a point of time when you want to retire. And whatever that's left out after the lifetime, you would like to pass it down through a succession plan, through a deed of uh, will, or through some sort of a charity, you'll do that. And that's there, I mean, perhaps the wealth, whatever you enjoy during your lifetime, the balance part of it gets passed on to the, the family and sometimes from the charity, there's a general society also. Then, of course, these are very simple rules when we are talking about wealth. I mean, maybe how do we create wealth? There are so many strategies, so many plans that are there all over the uh, place. I'm sure that, you know, you must have done an excellent course also to understand financial planning, wealth management. But if you really ask me, having worked I mean, in the long, uh, for a very long time in the financial service industry, and somebody asked me, give me some simple tips which actually help me to accumulate wealth. I'll always say that the earlier you start, the better it is. Starting early is extremely important. People start thinking about how do I create a billion dollar wealth when you're already 55 years old. I think it's very unlikely that will happen unless you start building them in your dream, even when, when you are very young in the college or in the school, when you start thinking about it, starting early is extremely important. And then of course you have to work hard. Everybody who has made enough wealth in the world, whether it is Ambani to the Bill Gates to the Ajim Premji to Narayana Murthy or to any other person who's really made enough money for not just for themselves but for the whole you know, family and society, you would have seen that they are always the most hardworking people. So working hard is the another important criteria. There is no way unless I mean, you hit a lottery and lottery is really not going to be lost in for too, much, too long a time. And the kind of wealth I mean, that will come through prize money is at the most, I mean, that will be burnt up very fast. But the hard-earned accumulated wealth is something that's going to last for a longer time. So working hard is the second important thing. The third important point I want to talk about is save regularly. When you earn, let's say, I mean, a thousand rupees salary, you can still, I mean, save maybe 10% of that. When you get, I mean, 10,000 rupees, you can still save maybe 10%. You get, I mean, one lakh, you get one million, you can always save some element of that. When you observe the small and medium enterprises and when you see very hardworking housewives, whatever may be the smaller family budget, they will always save something. And the habit of saving is extremely important as a content pillar for the wealth. If you don't do that, I mean, if you really don't really have that kind of a saving habit regularly, and I'm not saying, I mean, save now and then forget about after some time, I mean, you start splurging, but then again, you know, come back to the savings. That's not going to work. I mean, every month, month on month, if you save something, that's really going to make, uh, turn into a huge uh, pool of money. And that's how, I mean, the real wealth gets created. And sure, as a financial planners and wealth advisors, you'll always talk about these things to customers. And the other point is, I want to think, talk about thinking long term. Wealth will never get accumulated, never get really created in the short term. In our parallels, we define that anything beyond five years is a long term. Below five years is a short term. And if you are thinking whether it is in the stock market, whether it is in the mutual funds, or it is in startup ventures, or any other business, or even suppose I'm in a normal house, uh, housewife savings also, unless you look at time uh, horizons beyond five years, it's really not going to work. And then because the lifetime lifespans are increased and people are now living beyond, I mean, 60, beyond 80 years, 90 years they're living. I mean, your actual earning will continue until the 65 and then you start drawing it down. So if you start working at the say 25 years and you retire at the age of 65, that means for the whole period of 40 years of your working life, you are to really save regularly and you think long term without really getting deviated by short-term attractions like you know okay let me just withdraw money from this and then play in a casino go on a holiday or take some kind of a bet and that's not the way you should really think long term and make sure that you protect the downside while you are doing that the downside could be something like a pandemic like our covid problem or something like a 
sudden accident that may happen, which will cause you to get hospitalized, or maybe some sort of a fire accident to your factory. So all these things eventually will cause serious dent on the well. That's why it's very important that while you're working very hard, and saving regularly, thinking long term, you have to protect also. And protection comes I mean, through an instrument of insurance, which I'm sure that all of you know how to do that. But at the same time, the last point is that you also have to take calculated risks to go for an upside. This is a differentiator. If, let us say, Mukesh Ambani was really thinking that, you know, if there's so many telecom companies out there, why do I have to start Zio? Then he wouldn't have started a company and then he wouldn't have got, I mean, maybe. 10 billion, 20 billion dollars money into that and become now I mean, one of the largest or the largest player in the country. It is important to really take bets and those bets have to be very calibrated, calculated. At the same time, while you are taking the bets, you have to protect your downside. And protection of downside comes through the insurance, protection of downside comes through allocation of assets across diversified portfolio and these are the rules which I'm sure that you know. So having said that these things about uh, uh, wealth, I mean, again, I would like to quickly move into the management part of it. Well, you accumulate and you actually have to manage. The management actually comes through various phases where you know your retirement, at the same time, risk management, and how do you get, I mean, make sure that your transition plan happens. And while you are doing that, your legal issues suddenly may crop up and then they may actually cause some problem. So these are the things which you'll have to take care of it while managing the wealth. And this is something that, you know, I would like to just briefly touch about wealth. Now, let me go to the health, the main topic of this discussion today. Why I started with the wealth is so many times, I mean, there is a connection between wealth and health and we don't really think that, you know, while we are working very hard, the other thing that will really for it is sleeping properly, eating properly, doing exercise properly, getting yourself de-stressed, that doesn't happen. And because of that, the actual health rates are beating and when the health rates are beating the whole problem starts. So let's talk about now the health. In case of health there are different aspects of health unlike wealth which is denominated in rupees or dollars which is a clearly measurable thing. Health is not a very clearly measurable thing. It is also the well-being. It is also how you feel about it. Physical health can be defined as an absence of disease. Physical health can be uh, said that, okay, if I have a huge video and if I have stamina, if I have muscular body, if I have six fat video, uh, then are they really manifestations of health? Not exactly. The manifestation of physical health is if you do not have any ailment, if you do not have any kind of disease and then you have that excellent immunity, even though you don't have a six pack video, even though you don't have muscular body, then you are perfectly fit and that's what the physical health is all about. And in case of physical health, unlike wealth, which actually accumulates over a period of time, here you see the physical health, I mean, actually changes its shade from the red to the green, to the a slighter shade of green, and then to orange, and then red as you, the age advances from zero to 100 years. All of us know that, you know, the childhood perhaps is the toughest time, then there is less immunity, there's a lot of probability of infections coming up, catching up, and then maybe in India, there's lack of nutrition. Because of that, I mean, the infant mortality is very high. So people have to make sure that, you know, not just, I mean, for uh, themselves or for their children, but, you know, for society at large, I mean, the children needs, I mean, a much better uh, protection from the various threatening diseases, because that's the time where the mortality is very high. But the moment you move into adolescence thin, then I think your health starts improving. Having worked in the insurance industry for many years, I've seen the actuaries charging a very high rate of premium in case of children below four years, five years. And the moment I mean, the child crosses the age of five, and then they are into, let us say, 12 to 18. Uh, 12 or 18, that's the time where the health their rates of premium will come down because the risk of death is very low. And in the adolescence, of course, the real risk is not because of health, but because of accidental deaths, because people tend to really ride, be a little bit careless, they tend to really run faster in the, on the roads, then they drive cars, motorbikes very fast, so there could be an accidental deaths, but generally speaking, in the adolescence, the health gets very stronger. 
but that's the time perhaps i mean the problems will start because you know he'll get married he or she will get married and then he will have maybe a promotion he will have a change of job he already accumulated some sort of a wealth and slowly the health starts deteriorating because of stress levels because of the additional tensions because of some sort of a psychological uh, problems he will suffer and then slowly slowly as he goes into the old age then those problems will really aggravate and then cause some sort of a physical disorder then how do we really make sure that this is supported so based on the fundamental things the health is all about only taking care of three things if you have the right kind of diet if you have the right kind of exercise and right kind of sleep then your health is taken care of so always i mean in case of childhood it is a nutrition and immunization are the two important differences as a child perhaps all of us are aware that we might have taken triple antigen and its bcg polio and other kind of a viruses now perhaps after some time we'll also have to get the vaccine for the covid 19 but right now i mean we don't have the vaccine but the fact is even for other deadly diseases like tb and uh, you know cholera not cholera tb um, uh, and then you have things like you know polio and all that you have vaccination vaccination and nutrition are the first thing you do it for child to protect people in the uh, childhood against ill health then in case of adolescents then it is a more of a balanced diet because you are growing up you need a right kind of vitamins you need to have protein diet you need to really have fiber uh, diet and these are the things that will actually help you in your adolescents to really maintain and grow keep growing and as you have grown then the right you might have got already excessive calories in your body and maybe your sedate work life work style is not really giving you enough kind of calorie burn and in such kind of situation that you need to have exercises and maybe you need an energy food whenever you need i mean an kind of an extra hour an extra uh, day I mean, extra working hours maybe some kind of an energy boosters but most importantly exercise is something that actually helps to tone up to maintain their health and when you come to the adulthood in adulthood it's all about activity and stress busters even minimum activity in, and this is very important right now when most of the people are now spending time uh, at home only they are not going to the offices they are not really going for any kind of external activity extra physical activity sports and normal exercises are not there because gyms and others are closed in such kind of situation you have to really think of at least some kind of a minimal activity in that adult because for the last 90 days most of us most of indians not just indians alone almost everyone in the world have been locked up at homes and if that is the case then I mean, your stress is increasing because you are not really knowing what is going to be the future at the same time you hardly have any kind of activity so within the confines of your home within the constraints what you have you still have to produce some kind of a physical activity stretching yoga and things like that so that you know your health will be better and when it comes to the old age and i define old age as anything beyond 65 and all and till death i mean maybe about 100 years or 85 years the real health that will actually be protect the defenses fitness real problems is the care and comfort in case of older people it lot of us think that you know okay if you give them the medicines if you give them the physical Uh, uh, you know the doctor said ways and then certain kind of i mean protection in this any problems they have that sufficient it is not sufficient for the old age the most important thing people require is because they're almost like children they require a lot of care and comfort they would like to have their children around them they would like to have social engagements and they would like to have their grandchildren with them if not physically possible in current situation but at least I mean they should like to talk to them and we engage with them that kind of a care and comfort is the most important defense against the physical health problems in the old age so i'm just summarizing that how the various aspects during the life stage from childhood to the old age the health takes deterioration but still you have defenses available and these defenses are simple things which are in your control you don't need a doctor's help and all that they actually if you have to say summarize into three buckets one bucket is the kind of food you eat sometimes you have to eat eat more protein food when you are growing up and when you are really grown up then you have to eat less and have a more balanced food 
and the second important thing is you must have enough exercise and third thing is you must have stress busters and care and comfort if you do that i mean the health is as good as anything else and you don't need in most of the cases any kind of medical help now i'm coming to the other important aspect physical health is only one one part but physical health is you know like people say that it is to certain extent i mean uh, it is good to have no diseases but without our knowledge even though they are not apparent i mean ultimately every body organ deteriorates the deterioration is something that evident and what people call it is asymptomatic in an asymptomatic situation if we have some underlying social problems those underlying social problems keep corroding the body organs and we may not know but you will have cardiac issues you will have renal issues and those things are not visible even though you go for an x ray or you go for a ct scan but the problem is until unless you have the second dimension of health that's called social health you will not really enjoy the best health so physical health can be taken care of through nutritious food exercise and stress busters for social health i mean you need a different kind of dimension so first of all what is social health social health is all about having good relationships i am using the word relationships here because relationships include the relationship with your friends family with your wife husband girlfriend boyfriend companion what have you there whatever it is you must have a good relationships there is no way a person can actually live alone in a box and then think that you know i am happy i have enough wealth i have muscular body i will survive that's not going to be the case the case is only when he is got time to spend with your friends family or companions that is the time i mean actually the social health improves and while you are having relationships it's very important that you engage with them meaningfully because i have seen that people are now very fully engaged with the friends on social media but most of the time it is hi bye or exchange in some kind of a meaningless greetings and then you know shutting it down there is no meaning and purpose in the interaction if there is no meaning and purpose in the interaction that's not going to add to the social health so you need to always also have a positive thing i've seen that you know in whatsapp groups and others when people actually exit messages sometimes i mean they lead into some altercation some kind of a heated argument people actually shut off from the social media and they call it ghosting ghosting means that you don't really talk or do anything respond to the people on the whatsapp or any other social media because you don't know how to positively react to a situation even though the message is negative even though somebody else is having negative thoughts how positively you respond that and here the excellent example is the mahatma gandhi's example that somebody slaps you can you really show the other cheat it may be an extreme example of positivity but the fact is that even if there is a slap on you in the social media how can you positively react to that is important thing and your ability to respond to the different social situations for example now nowadays most of us and i'm sure that you know all of you all of you wow. have children some of you have got children who are some of you have got children who are working Are studying overseas. Yeah. The moment you are moving away from the comfort of home, and suddenly you are going to the a new country like America or maybe Japan or Germany or Singapore and these kind of countries, they have totally different kind of social etiquette, different kind of social mores. And how do you really respond to that? Today, maybe you eat here a thali, and then you eat with your hand. And there, you have to go and eat something there with a uh, spoon and fork, which is a simple adjustment socially. but here perhaps you celebrate diwali and dasara there you have to celebrate uh, new new year's day and christmas or maybe you have to greet people differently you may have to hug them cheek uh, kiss them on the cheek not withstanding the covid problem right now but your social mores are very different but the ability to adjust to those kind of social situations the ability to really understand that there is no right and wrong in any kind of a social norm it is just that while you are in rome be a roman while you are in india we are an indian the moment you go to america we have an american and very fairly mingle and mix with us we feel the more such kind of things people do that their adaptability is very high and their social health quotient is going to be very high and ultimately while you are doing that do not miss out on a sense of belonging that your roots are in india or roots are somewhere in the family in some town some village roots are in a very close family 
while you do that adopt yourself to socially a different situation you must have that ability to nurture a sense of belonging and also contribute to other other people's activities because if you don't contribute you are only doing everything for your own selfish sake you keep your house very clean but you know drop them in all the garbage outside you don't even bother to really do even a minimum thing for society's hygiene outside your home that's not correct i mean you have to also do something contribution to other people's activities that's the time when your social health improves and why social health is so important for you to take care is because there is an inherent connection between social health and the physical health people with good social relationships actually are found to be having very good cardiac condition they don't have any kind of blood pressure and other blood sugar level problems and they will be in a position to manage stress in much better fashion they will not really suffer to small small issues choose their their ability to handle crises in their lives are much better and doctors have found out that their endocrine system which is the actual the system that creates separates say various kinds of juices in our body and then responsible for the, those enzymes and that endocrine system works very well your cardiovascular system works very well moreover the immunity system is also going to be better all of us know how important an immunity system is nowadays because of the covid scare and you have seen that the people with a low immunity are succumbing to the uh, virus right now and people with a high immunity even though the virus has infected them they are able to recover so it's so important that you build up your immunity system by having a good social health fitness thing and that fitness will actually will help you to fight off diseases but having said that it is very important it is intricately connected to your physical health how do you have a good social health here the first and foremost thing is all of us try to imitate somebody else i would like to be like amitabh bachchan or i would like to be like shahrukh khan or somebody else wants to be like deepika uh, i would like to be like you know uh, virat kohli or mahendra singh dhoni these are all good aspirations but at the end of the day you understand that your strengths may be different and you are very different unique human being in the world and if that is the case first and foremost thing to start with is to be yourself and while you are having tough time with your work and career and maybe mat matrimonial responsibilities sometimes you have to really find a fine balance between your personal time and professional time and social time also if you have something very personal time you need to have it only you yourself may be doing some meditation yoga or in just thinking research whatever it is that's your for yourself and then the work time starts and then maybe some kind of a social time i lived for a very long time in mumbai and i have seen that the people in mumbai maintain that very nicely they work come in late evening at 7 o'clock 8 o'clock but they still go out and then have a party and then have a wonderful social life too perhaps they're missing on the personal time the personal time with the family the idea is that you must have a balance between personal time professional time and social time and the more you do that then the real social health keeps improving while you're doing that you also must understand sometimes friends may not really understand the limits what you have they may cross the boundaries as like the chinese guys are not crossing the boundary then you must clearly push them back and tell them that sorry this is the boundary line i don't want you to cross it and i also won't cross your boundary line at the same time we'll be relatively connected to each other and understand each other's feelings and how do you do that you do that through a very transparent positive communication so you do that that's how i mean the overall social health improves and while you're doing that to the next in possible resolve all your conflicts because when human beings are interacting with one another conflicts will definitely come whether it is with your wife or husband sister brother or friends office colleagues you will have conflicts and those conflicts will come because not you are right or they are wrong or vice versa but irrespective of who is right or wrong there will always be a conflict and that kind of a conflict for you to really overcome the best way to do that is resolve it but if it is something that is beyond resolution just move on it is important for you to understand that you only have one life and then moving on is not a stigma and moving out of marriage moving out of relationships moving out of friendships moving out of corporate jobs is no longer a stigma it is something that you take it a very carefully considered decision but you have to do that because if you don't do that then you are continuously exposed to the conflict and the negative impact of the conflict will keep coming it in you and that's not going to work so that's why most of us 
people have changed the jobs it's not because we didn't like the organization we didn't like the work but we didn't like the boss we didn't like our subordinates we didn't like the people with whom we are interacting and we moved away and that happens sometimes unfortunately in a marital relationship also but you have to take it considered call is it worth it is it something that you know you need to really resolve it quickly or is it something that you need to take a long term solution once you do that then your social health will take take ref itself now i'm coming to the most important point of mental health mental health is very important it is an another dimension of health which is also being impacted because of your physical health and social health why mental health is important is a couple of slides i'll show you then you'll understand why it is there you perhaps have seen some of these celebrities these celebrities are very well known figures in the world lady gaga is a celebrated pop star and perhaps you must have heard of harry potter the most popular books in the world and the other of that is jk rowling you might have heard of robin williams robin williams is an oscar winning uh, actor and a movie like Ch chachi 420 which was made in india in hindi by kamal hassan was originally played by robin williams mrs doubtfire was the movie's name and michael phelps is a gold medal winning olympic swimmer why i am showing this pictures you will very soon understand and of course these pictures you will also will easily you will recognize right from the big b amita bachchan to the most successful bollywood star deepika padukone to shahrukh khan to manisha koirala why i am showing all these figures is you will be surprised that each one of them had mental health problems each one of them had depression they suffered serious bouts of depression and somehow they have overcome somehow they made sure that their lives are better unfortunately robin williams of course succumbed to that he committed suicide and we also have a case of shushan singh rajput now shushan singh rajput name perhaps is now coming up very frequently in the social media and the mainstream media people who are familiar with the bollywood stars will understand it is one of the most successful talented stars but what happened why i mean he committed suicide is not exactly the purpose of the discussion i just don't want to single out shushan singh rajput but i just want to say when people are having such a kind of success such a kind of wealth why does why do they still suffer from that kind of a problems the problem is much more deeper than what we think the, there are about 450 million people actually suffer from mental health globally and it's not because they don't have money or it's not because they don't have the right kind of uh, you know connections and the celebrity status and all that people do have it but they still succumb to that when you actually calculate the number of years gone because of some kind of a disease or disability that's called vld the years lived with a disability that means the sum total of the entire diseases you calculate and then say how many man years have been lost and that you calculate as the years lived with disability one third of that happened because of mental illness that means if you add all those problems of diseases one third of that is in a way some way directly or indirectly caused by the uh mental health problems and mental health problem sort of a milder version of that is a depression and a lot of people say that okay he is depressed the depression is okay fine he'll get out of it i mean he's got some kind of a problem he must have failed in the examination or his, his girlfriend must have jilted him or he must have lost his job and that's why he is sad no sadness is different from de depression depression is much more deep rooted depression actually contributes to about the third largest contributor of the global disease burden and depression comes not just because you know of a short term factors it is much more deep rooted thing we will analyze that and try to see what are the reasons why it actually happens but essentially depression may come because of alcoholism substance abuse schizophrenia is something a problem that comes because of genetic disorder or bipolar disorders these are the various causes of depression and mental illness and if that thing these things actually take control of the soul take control of the mind that's the time suicides actually sometimes happen and one of one of the largest causes the biggest cause for the one of the causes for the suicide is the mental health problem 
like we had defined the physical health, we had defined the social health. If I have to define, I mean, mental health, how do I define it? Mental health is slightly different to define because sometimes, I mean, we just say very casually, oh, that guy is padal. We'll use the word padal very casually because sometimes all of us are irrational. All of us sometimes, I mean, actually behave very weirdly and very, very differently from the normal code of conduct. And that's the time people call, call us padal. But that may be a, a slur, but the fact is that the, if you go slightly deep, the way we think, feel, and act is actually, a, it gives away your mental health. It's all also about how we handle stress. If there is a situation like COVID-19 that's coming and hitting all of us, a rational thinking people will maintain social distance and then do hand sanitization and perhaps wear a mask. But irrational people will suddenly start uh, getting stayed up and then continuously watch the newspaper reports and then send tipons and messages and worry and will not be able to sleep and that perhaps will result in stress. So mental health is also how do you handle stress? Whether it is a COVID problem, job loss, or a divorce, or even a death of a near, near and dear, but how do you respond to that is the something that you know defines your mental health. It's also about how do we relate to each other. If there is a wife and husband and they're continuously keep fighting with each other, that means one of them or both of them have got a mental health problem. Your ability to relate to others in a very sane manner decides your quotient of mental health. In a way, it is the sum total of your thinking, your mood, and your behavior. Thinking is, are you able to think cogently? Are you able to intellectually think, rationally think is one. And then your mood, do you feel sad? Do you feel, I mean, elated? And how do you convey yourself those moves in your behavior? Do you work very hard? Do you work, I mean, casually? These are the things that actually are symptoms of uh, mental health thing. And if you ask the fundamental reasons why people suffer from mental health, maybe because of the genes, this is something like, you know, every disorder, whether it is physical, social, physical or mental disorders have got some root to the genes. So if the people in the family is having some kind of a mental health problem, it is likely that, you know, the uh, children may get it. Apart from that, there is a brain chemistry that the brain chemistry, brain creates a lot of chemical uh, chemicals and those chemicals, if they're excessive or they're corrosive, they can actually cause some kind of a mental health problem and also life experiences. You might have seen that the people, the children who suffered excessive abuse in the hands of the parents or in the hands of teachers, they'll always are very, very afraid of, you know, uh, even facing smaller problems in their life. The trauma and abuse is another reason why many people suffer from mental health. Having said that, uh, these are the reasons. Can we identify some early warning signals in the mental health uh, thing? Because if you are not able to identify it, suddenly you see signals. In news like you know, uh, Sushant Singh committed suicide, then you feel very, very upset that why did I not know about this? You perhaps are aware of the entire kind of debate that's going on in the social media that several celebrities say that, okay, if only I had known about this particular problem just a few months back, perhaps I would have lent him a helping hand, perhaps this kind of a tragedy wouldn't have occurred. But the fact is, these early warning signals keep coming up. Every day you see them among your near and dear, but you ignore them. You don't take them seriously. The time is now to really think that if these things are happening, yes, there is a possibility that they're actually leading to a serious situation of personality disorder, serious situation of depression, or even a much more bigger problem of schizophrenia and all that. First thing is, if you're eating and sleeping, quantity comes down. That's the first signal. If you are able to eat well, if you are able to sleep well, most likely they are a very, very healthy person. Then if you are withdrawing from work or people, work of course, I mean, sometimes we shrug them because you know, the boss may be very uh, tough guy and then your work may be very unpleasant. Sometimes I mean, you would like to take a break, that's understandable. But then if you are shirking them and repeatedly and if you are also not meeting the people, then that's a signal that something is going to be wrong. And also no expressions or feelings. All of us, the brain is wired to really respond to a laughter. If there is a joke, you must laugh. If there is some sort of a 
tragic news you must feel sad but if you are devoid of those expressions then suddenly you must start thinking that is there an issue that is coming up and other thing is of course the body aches and pains feeling very helpless or hopeless and if these things are resulting in continuous smoking or excessive drinking or substance abuse then definitely there is a problem the other uh, signal sir if somebody is feeling very confused or forgetful this actually happens in the old age because of alzheimer's disease and all that but it may happen in the young ages also and people unduly feeling extremely angry or upset or worried is another reason and if these signals are happening sometimes people think of harming themselves and that should give a clear cut clue that this person requires help now if these are the symptoms you see among your family members or near and dear or even your neighbors maybe i think the first thing you should do that is to make sure that you know the person gets professional help let me say that the health is not as simple topic as wealth like wealth planners can actually help i mean people to get wealth but medicine is a much more complicated subject medicine works on hundreds and hundreds of variables and all that it is not something that is easy to understand it's not easy to also master it so while we may have some idea that the person requires help please do not think that you alone can actually solve the problem he definitely requires a professional help and while professional help is coming up the connection with the friends for the overall support system is good and make sure that you know if a person is very inactive then if you can be given some sort of a physical activity the one which he likes that have playing some kind of a game or maybe run or even walk some kind of a physical activity will help him to come out of it other thing we have noticed it is when people actually suffer from mental problems the more they are able to relate it to other people and then help in solve the problems you might have heard of this uh, case where you know the migrants in mumbai got I mean uh, stranded there and all of them wanted to go to up and bihar but nobody was there to uh, help them then somebody actually people sold away their assets and they came out and they are not the richest people they sold away their bikes they sold away their cars and then with that money raised they actually bought tickets for the people and then they arranged the travel why did they do it i think the by doing that perhaps they would have got more value than the kind of asset they have sold this is very true when you by helping others you will actually get to feel better that's why i said wealth is not just for yourself wealth is also for sharing with others in some proportion of course the simple other thing is also to get enough sleep and if all these things are not working i think that's the time maybe i think from a psychiatrist to the uh, a psychiatrist you have to go psychologist to psychiatrist you have to go and uh, psych uh, the difference between a psychologist and psychiatry psychologist only works on your social aspects and your behavioral aspects whereas a psychiatrist actually works on your human anatomy he will actually prescribe medicines like antidepressants anti anxiety and mood stabilizing medicine medicines this is something that i would like to uh, say, repeatedly say that you know most of the problems are solvable these are not something that i mean it is impossible to solve either through friendship through some sort of a social contacts or even antidepressants you will be able to solve these mental health problems so there is no need to really say that this is something very very difficult and castigate the person and treat him like a loner now the other point what i want to say is the what is the difference what is the connection between physical health and the mental health it's very simple the mind is part of your overall body mind is something that is actually uh the brain and the overall control of your body and if the mind is unwell either because of depression or because of some sort of a other problem then the rest of the body how strong it is it's not going to work perhaps you are seeing and you understood also shushan singh is one of the most able bodied persons he used to go to the gym regularly in the taj hotel he used to exercise he used to do everything to maintain his figure to be fit as a hero but the fact is that his his mind was really getting impacted and that's the time perhaps his physical health also to take uh, that's the time perhaps i mean he actually took the extreme step so ultimately how much how much a physical health is not important because the mind and body are connected and we also have seen that the reverse is important 
sometimes people who have got access of physical discomfort or physical problem like cancer or incurable diseases they commit suicide because they suddenly realize that this is something that you know i do not do not want to suffer and then they actually go out and do that the case of robin williams which i mentioned the oscar award winning actor because he is suffering from kind of a physical ailment he went and committed suicide so that's also very uh, clear that your physical and mental health will get connected and most of the times people with the highest rate of mental problems actually aggravated their process of can their uh, incidence of cancer you have seen that the patients who are suffering from cancer if they are happy the recovery rate is high if they are not ha uh, happy at all the recovery rate is low and that's why i mean it is very important that you know even though there is a physical problem still mentally people have to be happy and we all know that you know depression also causes a sort kind of a accentuated heart disease and whether it is cancer or heart disease or anything else i mean there is a clear connect between the physical and mental health the body and mind are very very well connected so now we will come to the uh, uh, very interesting part we talked about health we talked about wealth but what about happiness you may have health you may have wealth you may still not have happiness or perhaps you may have happiness and you may not have any kind of a uh, any kind of wealth or health but still people can feel happy or vice versa so how do you actually define happiness see look at the picture here we are showing a, a lady who's actually having the simple ice cream but there is a lot of happiness on her face so happiness may be a very simple thing that actually can cause you joy so it is important for you to understand that happiness is very much within your control it does not require a long term financial planning it does not require a huge study of your body and then exercise and all that it is doing very simple things to actually cause happiness and happiness if you are define it is opposite of sadness it is a feeling of well being joy or contentment and important thing is unlike perhaps the wealth and physical health issues the happiness is very much within your control and if you look at that ultimately the ultimate goal of life is happiness only but the only problem with happiness is happiness is very short lived it is impossible for you to feel continuously happy for example if you are if the lady picture if you are seeing that she is having a nice ice cream you see the kind of joy in her face but after 5 minutes 10 minutes you will notice sir you will not see her smiling maybe because that elation that moment of joy is short lived so when we talk about happiness then there is another factor perhaps some we need to introduce and talk about that lot of people say that you know success gives you happiness whether success how do you define success we'll come to that little later but is success really gives uh, happiness is there any connect we must understand that success is a very measurable thing but happiness is subjective you may really pass for example let us say uh, you may really pass with 95% marks in the class but the person may still be unhappy because somebody else has got 97 a person would have got i mean silver medal but still i mean somebody would have got gold medal he is still not happy so while happiness is something very subjective success is something clearly measurable thing and most of the time success is what people other people say of you that he is very successful he is a top class actor he is a well uh, uh well he is a very good uh, you know sports person he is a good actor these are the thing what other people say of you is actually called success where is what you inherently feel within yourself irrespective of what other people say about you that is what happiness is and the fact is here also like happiness and in previous slide we talked about i mean happiness is linked to the actual your emotional health here it is again uh one minute here happiness is also linked to your success people who are eventually continuously consistently successful must have been very happy people it's unlikely that you know a person continuously achieves success but she is still unhappy here of course i mean a little bit of i mean uh, in this slide we i talked about what is the difference between uh, success in a way success is also translated into wealth because the moment you say success success measured in material uh, 
aspects. Success measured in non-material thing is not wealth, but success measured in material uh, aspects is wealth and is that differentiated from happiness. Success is measurable, happiness is limitless, it is immeasurable. If you have a fancy car that's called success, but you know, if you take a good ride with your friends, that's happiness. If you work very hard, perhaps you'll get success of promotion, but if you are not enjoying that work, I mean, you are not going to have happiness. And if you really think that, you know, every, every time, whatever I do, and that's what, I mean, uh, people should acknowledge, and then you are worried about what other people think about it, that may be a success kind of a uh, fixation, but whoever is the person, fewer people in your life who actually like you, that's happiness. Success is money and happiness is value. That's a very important to understand. Success is always in terms of, you know, monetary or some kind of a physical or material things. Whereas happiness is about value. What is value? What is your personal dharma? What is your personal uh, important uh, principles in your life? And if those things are really you abide by, then you may feel happy. Though you may, may not have that much of a money or the kind of wealth. So ultimately, the fact is that, you know, you may have all the success in the world, but still, I mean, you may find short of having the right kind of happiness. Why I am now introducing these points of success, happiness, physical health, mental health, you will know that all of these things are connected to your good life. When we say there's only one thing, ultimately, I must have a good life. So when we say I must have a good life, how do you define that kind of a good life? Is there any kind of research that has been done anywhere in the world to define that the good life is something that comes because of you know, ABCD factors and because of wealth, money, success, happiness? I would like to show some interesting slides. This is the per capita wealth across the countries. If you see that the darkest red are the countries which are not having that kind of a wealth, you'll see India is having per capita wealth less than $200,000. And then maybe the Eastern Europe is also that. The entire Sub-Saharan Africa and the Southern America are the countries which are not having that kind of a wealth. And you see the green thing, the entire North America, you have America and Canada, New Zealand and um, Australia and the Western and Northern part of Europe. These are the places which you see that, you know, the wealth per capita health wealth is very high. Why the per capita wealth is very high is a different matter. But just want to ask one person, if these countries are having that kind of a per capita wealth very high, does it really mean that they have good health and good health? Just see this. In the next slide, you will see that this is the disease map of the world. What is the total burden of disease? And map it up in the world. And then do you see that the disease levels are high or low? In the previous slide, I told that the Northern America, Australia, and the Western Europe are the countries which are having the best of the wealth. And you look at that, they are also having the best of health. Some other countries also are having better health. But the fact is the countries which have good, uh, good wealth are exactly the same countries which also have good health. So there is an absolutely clear -cut correlation between health and wealth. If you have a good wealth, it is likely that you may have a good health because you will take care of your health. You will know that I mean, if you really take a hit on the health, your wealth also will erode. And the way you struggled very hard for your wealth, you will also work very hard on your health side. This is one in interesting thing. But the third dimension, wealth and health are not necessarily the ultimate goals in life. What about happiness? We talked about happiness. Is happiness really related to wealth and health? Let us again see. It is a happiness quotient. And here also you will see exactly the Northern America and Australia and again the Western Europe are the happiest part of the entire world. So if you look at that, suddenly you realize that if you have good amount of wealth, with that you can take care of good health. At the same time, if you have these two, you may also feel very happy. It is a different matter that, you know, the countries which are not having good wealth may also feel happy, but the root is very clear. Wealth, health, and happiness. Wealth, health, and happiness is a 
thing which I am saying this in this current world because we are living in Kalyug. We are not living in Dharmayug where perhaps wealth is not that much of importance. But here in Kalyug, it is very important that first you must have wealth and that wealth actually will take care of I mean, all your health and other things and also to take care of your happiness. I'm sorry when I'm saying that first you take care of it, I don't mean that you know you put wealth ahead of health. Wealth and health, you have to take care of it simultaneously. And the moment you take care of them simultaneously, most likely you will also be a happy person. So there is a formula that's been given by international psychologists. This formula is H is equal to S plus C plus B. What does it mean? Means ultimately if your goal is happiness, your happiness actually is dependent upon your biological factors, which is your physical health, and your C, your conditions of living, which is wealth. So your S plus C is equal to actually your wealth, and that equivalent that equates with your voluntary choices and actions we make daily, which is equivalent to your emotional quotient. So if you compare, if you take this kind of a formula, what does it mean? The formula actually says the equal part of wealth and equal part of health will actually cause you the happiness. If you have any one part missing, your happiness will get eroded by that amount. So this is all about, I mean, the, the current topic about health, wealth, and how do you take care of these two things to get happiness. Well, I mentioned that I just also want to take I mean, a few minutes to introduce you about our company, Insurance and Birth. And how insurance and bots can actually give you this kind of a one single integrated technological solution for both wealth and health. Uh, all of you, or some of you, perhaps are working as financial planners, as financial advisors, licensed, and uh, you know, advising some of your customers. The important thing is, while you have your personal relationships and your strong product knowledge and domain knowledge that's helping you. Now the digital technology can make things much more easier. The insurance box is a digital technology platform which is available in the mobile phone or the web where you know the lead flow, that means if you have one customer without really having the necessity to call him up several times, you'll be able to convert that better and you'll not have any kind of leakages and you'll have one single view of what's happening to his entire portfolio and you can digitally manage the whole thing. And now in the process, of course, you can earn higher income because I understand that in the current situation, the mutual funds are not necessarily giving you the right kind of income. And then the customers are asking for insurance and insurance is something may or may not be in your product portfolio. So insurance and bus gives you the kind of opportunity to just download the application and then do your uh, connect directly to the customers. And interestingly, that's the phase one of our thing. In the phase two, we are merging the entire thing into one single account and where in that account, you have one single sign off for your customers and then you have all your health and wealth needs to be merged into one. How they are merged into one, I'll mention. This is what I mean when I say wealth plus health in one single journey. Since I explained the concept of how wealth and health are connected to your happiness, how can you take care of the protection, security, savings, and wealth creation at the same time? You know, your health creation, health protection, kind of everything, everything into one. For which you need to have life insurance, you need to have health insurance, you need to have financial security like loans, EMI facility, or uh, some other savings opportunities. You need to have wellness, and plus, you need to have medical checkups at the workplace, you need to have assisted living when people grow old. Each and every element of these things can be combined into one single platform. And that is what I'm mean, going to be made available by Insurance and Birth. And with this remarks, I mean, I complete my presentation and I'll be very happy to take any questions from any one of you on any of these matters on wealth or health. And thank you very much for your patience. Uh, any question from audience?
Hello. Have any questions? Hello. Hello. Yeah, bolu. Ah, bolchi. Ah, ah. Because the question is not clear. The question is. Then we will give a vote of thanks. Then we will give a vote of thanks. Question is. Question is. Question is. Question is. Question is. Basically, how to implement all these things? This is the main thing. All over the, the discussion, whatever you have done, such as people are doing, almost everybody knows of these things. But uh, better if we know that how can it be implemented in our life. What uh, is the way of? Gautam, okay. can I ask some? Gautam, yes. can I ask? Huh? Yes, 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 please, yes, please. Yes, yes. Yes, uh, the thing is that uh, say we meet a daily uh, different clients or say daily uh, somebody uh, in our family or uh, outside our home. So how could I know that the uh, the, the front person is suffering from some uh, mental problem or mental uh, things? Uh, nowadays, it is also seen that the smaller one. The babies is also suffering from these mental uh, things, problems. So how could we uh, recognize or I, I identify or say I, how could I know that the uh, person is suffering from some of this mental uh, agony or say mental dissatisfaction or some problem is there? Hello. Yeah. So you want me to answer? Yes, yes. First, two things. One is that, you know, as I mentioned, the sequence could be health and wealth. And there are some things which you can do as an advisor, something the person himself has to do that. Something the person himself has to do that, or some maybe you can give him an advice or whatever it is, like, you know, have the right kind of exercise. You know, you go for a walk, you sleep well, you will not be able to control those movements unless through an advice, he may follow, he may not follow. But at least as an advisor, you will be able to do two things very clearly. One is that, you know, in the financial planning, the wealth management part of it is something that you will clearly follow, fall in your domain. And I understand most of you are wealth advisors. So by making sure that, you know, he will save smaller amounts in a very risk-free environment, and regularly he does that and he plans for that and you are taking care of his future uncertainties and you're taking care of a possible issues where you know there'll be some opportunity for him to really for some need for him to take away his money with joy with in case of a job loss and all those things you will have a cushion for that so your wealth accumulation you can take care of it through your normal wealth planning Added to that, if you add the insurance angle, the health insurance angle and the life insurance angle to that, then you are covering the downside potential. Now, as I mentioned to you in the last slide, it is not just only the insurance that will take, perhaps take care of the health. You also need additional layers of value-added services. These additional layers of value-added services could be, I mean, something like, you know, a wellness checkup or medical checkup or some kind of a a uh, doctor's advice, some kind of a uh, spa, wellness uh, things. These are all things that can, can be stitched together in one single uh, platform. And that platform, you can download it from the website and you can opt for that and enroll the customers for that and they, they start the journey. 
the point what i would like to say is there is no magic wand where you say that okay today you are very unhealthy tomorrow you will become very healthy just because of that it's not going to happen that way but for a period of time when you start doing all those steps which are guided by the platform starting from the insurance and various wellness steps then over a period of time he'll get better just like wealth also you need to plan for that ahead of time ahead of the actual problem that comes and hits you then only you can solve the thing and one of the solutions what we are offering and ours is not the only solution i just don't want to do a sales pitch here what i'm saying is one of the solutions is also what we are offering that's the the insurance in bar solution which you can download you can become our partner and then deliver the kind of protection to required health insurance and wellness plans doctor i have also a question i want to ask you because this this uh, situation right, right now how we are just going through the difficulties like the whole world is going through the pandemic and there is a uh, stress level has gone high and there is a mental health is a, uh, it has been affecting everyone so how you see in after it overcomes how the people is going to react on that and uh, what we should do instead of insurance instead of your financial side what is the social responsibility we are having how we should help our environment our people it's two things uh, is actually a very simple thing one is that under current situation there is no cure there is no vaccine available at least for some time the moment you understand that there is no cure there is no vaccine available most likely it may come little later maybe by end of the year but until then what we do if you follow only these three steps and these three steps are in your control and it is not in the control of the government the moment you think that the government has to do something maybe that's the way disappointment starts the only these three steps and i'm saying this because i have a lot of friends actually i have friends in china i have friends in america europe and i have friends in mumbai the worst affected places they said if you do this three then most likely the virus will not impact you first is social distance it is not lockdown please understand the difference between lockdown and social distance is very different lockdown means everything is now uh, shut down that is something that now impossible for india to afford because we don't have the kind of money to really shut the whole of economy on the other hand you can go out by maintaining the social distance social distance is minimum 6 feet this is your first level of defense if as long as you are continuously maintained between you and the next human being is 6 feet distance it is very very unlikely that you will contract the virus that's the first one the second one is we don't know maybe if you are entering into an elevator a lift and somebody must have sneezed there and then you entered there you did not see anybody but those droplets are there so you have to wear a mask whether the other person is wearing the mask or not immaterial but you have to wear a mask and the mask must be n95 mask and the mask also must be very well properly worn i have seen people just wearing the mask but not covering their nose not covering their mouth it's not going to work if you wear mask as a fashionable item it's not going to work you have to wear a mask properly at least whenever you are coming into public domain so that is the second part in your private privacy of the house you don't have to wear the mask but the moment when you come out you have to wear in the car you don't have to wear please understand while you are exercising you should not wear while you are in the car you should not wear but outside you should you should wear the mask physical distance mask and the third one you may touch something accidentally while you are wearing mask and the virus will live on certain kind of surfaces based on the kind of surface and temperature it may live for 1 hour to 24 hours to 48 hours we don't know which surface is infected and which surface your hands are touching so every time you touch something you sanitize and if you make this three nothing will happen this is the 100% sure shot prevention only thing is difficult because my in the mind will have to control this so it is a battle of the mind the moment when you fight this thing nothing will happen because virus cannot come in the air through your window it cannot come virus cannot come just like tuberculosis virus is coming through the air no it's not like that this virus always transmits from one human being to another human being through droplets of uh, you know sneeze or maybe cough if these things are prevented there is no problem at all
Hello. Any other questions? Uh, any other question from Gorada? Have any question? Hello. I think. Uh, so, Tawanda. Uh, Hello. Afternoon. Thank you, sir, for your presentation. Nice presentation. And I uh, look forward for your uh, cooperation uh, on this line in the near future. And I hope something best and good evening, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, we need more cooperation from you, sir. Uh, we need the actual uh, implementation in our society and in uh, the uh, people of the across the globe so sure. uh, how to how to uh, we can implement it uh, that's the main issue we, uh, everybody uh, many things are no but they are uh, can implement it so we should uh, implement it and we need to know how to implement it so that's why uh, we need uh, uh, more program and another program whenever we have time uh, you uh, please you can uh, join another program also, so then we can uh, do with you. So thank you so much. Uh, this is uh, this year's program. I think so much. Many body, uh, a, 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 many people are not uh, aware about about this. Yeah, this is not the money is not the main frustrations area. Frustration area is everywhere, every place. So how to manage? How to control? This is the main thing. Uh, in our city, in Calcutta, uh, last week, nine people uh, suicide in one single day. Different, oh di different uh, places, different family from different families. So oh societal tendency is growing, is rapidly growing. Uh, they have, uh, uh, they have this program before, uh, someone, people, uh, uh, some young guy uh, is uh, age 32, 33. He has lost his job and he is uh, uh, searching for uh, a job. Uh, he has uh, done with uh, 20,000 per month. Uh, now he is searching on at least five to 7,000, which is uh, at least uh, to survive uh, his family. Now this position is already uh, appeared. So everybody are uh, very, very toughest position in situation. Uh, so frustrations and uh, Many things are ahead. So we need support to the people and support to the society, human society, society of the uh, globe. Manjur Khan, uh, I think uh, you uh, you also uh, uh, help to people. So you have to, uh, I think uh, this is clothing session. So uh, you can want to words also uh, use for the set. Manjur Khan. Yes, no, no, the, the, this is the part actually I am also thinking basically the money and the matters. The money and matters are when it has been very uh, linked together because that soul cannot be happy. There should be a, what is called a, some sort of things we have to help each other uh, psychologically, those who are associated with the people. That's the part we have to start um, uh, looking for. That's the part I have asked to the doctor that what will happen after this pandemic because there the turmoil is going through there's a the panic is going through 
the people is already changed their mindset all emotional factors have been disturbed so this is a part has been happening because people cannot uh, face the reality because it never happens because what equation we have done through our life it is something we are still following the world is going to be different so i think that we have to help each other we have to understand each other that is the social that the part i talked about it not the government has to do like as mr gautam is taking this type of initiative to just really um, uh, do the uh, what is called awareness developing the awareness with the people and trying to understand each other and we have to go each other trying to understand we need to coach if we trying to advise it's not going to help we have to coach each other we have to understand the deep level of the cause most of the things are the deep level because this is this is called soul level uh, attachments are there because the materialistic parts are there we have been calculating doing this part uh, that thing cannot be always been what is called answer for our, uh, this situations there is a part i am thinking and uh, uh, mr gautam has also uh, uh, what is called approach this uh, this matter with other session i have really attended i'm going through the part and inshallah let's see the, how we'll be able to overcome in in future and thank you doctor for your uh, precise uh, uh, what is called the uh, presentation it is really very nice but we need to connect it each other because that's very important i think that's the question of everyone because if i have the money i can cover up with this insurance i can cover up with that and when you don't have the money how we should be associating with you and how we'll be emotionally will be attached and help people that also we should start working on that and that's for thank the time being for my um, uh, thought process and mr gautam thank you very much and doctor uh, thank you very much for your presentation thank you and, thank you very much and one thing i, uh, I add uh, uh, with it uh, that uh, uh, in bengali kaabat uh, that uh, chaas and bash mane chaas ka reciting and uh, working in uh, yeah. same place is not good for uh, uh, health or uh, wealth everything so yeah. that's the uh, after pandemic after pandemic the work from home is more more serious issues for every uh, people of the globe so uh, no. i i don't know how many days we are doing it uh, this is the main uh, threat of the society of the humanity the work True. from home it it is not True. possible the uh, home is not workplace <laughs> i know <laughs> this is the True. real 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 threat so we need work work always uh, within workplace not for home home is not workplace that mm -hmm. this uh, threat is very very bad situation every corporate people already they are frustrated uh, they have no time to uh, his own personal life they are always uh, now uh, even 20 22 hours in a day he is working with home from home so uh, this is very very serious issue uh, we should uh, care about it i think so uh, doctor nando gopal you can look after after this matter also we have Thank to think much. actually we have to start thinking differently because a very important part because we have some sort of things people teach us and we do we have to really ask our soul that how you feel better how you look the people better way because we should not think about ourselves protecting ourselves is not is, is enough because we have to protect our surroundings because if you take care of your surroundings automatically you'll be protected because when you been self self centered that i will make maximize my money i will get my money only i will look for my happiness it cannot go because if we are part of the world we are the molecules we, we are the whole world's molecules we have to act accordingly and we have to really feel in a positively and we have been associating with the uh, the people and as much as possible we should help each other and we this is a time for thinking that how we can do the thing differently because if you are trying to go with this old formulas and try to do i think it's not going to work so the next world is coming completely new and we cannot only protect ourselves because we have to protect the overall globe we have to go with the natures the nature how which has been working you can see the whole uh, universe how the other animal world birds and everybody they're living normal they don't have to think about anything because they have been limited in their earnings and what are the parts that they with their living because now things has gone in one sided So I think uh, those who attended and uh, my personal yeah, perspective is that we should start thinking for each other. That could be the best thing. And what Mr. Can Gautam you share? Thank you. The product deck uh, on this. Yes, sir. Uh, Hello. Hmm. 
So, uh, Dr. Nandagopal, sir, yeah, I, please, uh, you conclude this session. One or two last uh, keywords, please, sir. Okay. I think uh, I learned as much as from you as I have spoken, especially yourself and Mr. Manzoor Khan have mentioned two important things. One is that, you know, while we talk, thought alone is not going to work unless we implement it. That absolutely right thing. Unless we do something, we just cannot talk. The second thing is, what is that we need to do? We need to do not just by actually saying that, okay, you should take that plan, this insurance. That is not the right thing at this point of time. What is the right thing to do is to first share each other's burden. That burden may be actually a simple burden or it could be some sort of a dream or some sort of a advice. You first start connecting. Connecting and then start Saying that, okay, Abhaya, I'm there with you. We are all together into Thank this. You. This yeah. world is actually something that, you know, made of human beings. Let us work together. And that is the important takeaway. The moment we'll work, and I have one more question, Mr. one more point, Mr. Manzur Khan. I'm a, actually a student of economics. I will say, this problem will go away. Do not think that this is a long-term problem. This, at the most, is going to harm us only for six months to one year. The impact of that may be there for more than one year. But the world will come back to its normal. The world will come back to its normal, flourishing, joyful, playful world. And that's the hope all of us we must communicate to everybody. Correct. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, today I, I, I have concluded this session. Thanks everybody who are attending this session. And this session already recorded and uh, uh, we uh, link to, will be uh, sending in all groups and who uh, needed this session, he can see many times in recorded system. So thank you, everybody. Thanks once again, Dr. Uh, uh Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.